Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator, esthetician, sunscreen fanatic. And you know, one of my top, 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 top favorite sunscreens of 2021 was this from Eucerin. This is their oil control dry touch sun gel. This is everything for oily acne prone skin. This really rivals some of my favorite Korean sunscreens in terms of the elegance, the texture. But what I really appreciate the most about it is while it is so lightweight, it still is nicely lightly moisturizing. Semi mattifies, it really mostly controls oil, gives you more of a natural finish. It helps to really control oils throughout the day, especially if you reapply. And that's the other part of this. This reapplies beautifully beautifully, especially on top of makeup. So this was hands down a favorite. This is a drugstore option here in the EU and the UK for 50 mil. It is about roughly 16 pounds, although depending on where you buy, if there are sales or whatnot, you can get it anywhere between 10 to 15 pounds really. Bought a new one today and a backup for that one. My boyfriend stole both of mine, so he has two backups for him in this household's holy grail. Well, when I did my video talking about my favorite EU sunscreens and how I mentioned that one, everyone talked about there is this body size one, there's a bigger size packaging of it. It's the same formula. You should try it out. And I have it right here. This is the Eucerin Dry Touch Sun Gel. You can notice the size difference is actually very substantial. This is 200 mil and this is only 20 pounds. Although I'm seeing some pieces on liking it as low as 15 pounds. So you notice it is four times the amount for barely five pounds more. And so I bought this. I bought this back in July or August. I spent some time trying it out. I traveled with it here, there, bopping all around the US. And so let's talk about does the the large body size compared to the regular face one. So for the video, I'm basically gonna break down each individual formulation, kind of talk about the characteristics of each one, some formulation related points. And then at the end of the video, I will compare the two of them and really explain, do I find that they are similar to each other? Are they dupes? So the Holy Grail first, this is again, the oil control dry touch, as I mentioned, 50 mil for 16 pounds. Sometimes you can't get it cheaper. For me, this was a really interesting formulation and marketing point from a sunscreen, SPF 50 plus um, boot star rating. This is four star boot stars and they really market this as being for oily and blemish prone skin, a photo stable UVA UVB filters, as well as the specific botanical extracts from a licorice plant that part of it can help to kind of give you some antioxidant protection as well as another part of it giving you some DNA repair mechanisms, which was really interesting to read, cool to have, really interesting to have in a sunscreen, but mostly my focus is the texture, the wearability, the protection. They do also really emphasize the fact that this is sebum regulating due to two components, L-carnitine ingredient, which helps to regulate sebum production, as well as absorbing microparticles, primarily, I believe it's tapioca starch in this, that give the skin an immediate dry touch finish. So you're controlling the oil production, regulating it, as well as kind of controlling some of the shine, essentially blotting it so that you don't look as shiny throughout the day. And therefore you're getting overall a more natural, not matte, I mean, it's not really matte, it's not very dry looking, but very natural looking finish throughout the day, even for really oily skin individuals. And they say it lasts up to eight hours. I do reapply this. So for me, it's more like I'm just compounding that effect throughout the day. It is unscented. It does have alcohol but it is unscented. There's no fragrance in here and it has an ultra light, non-greasy texture. Can vouch for that. UV filters for this, you have homosalate, avobenzone, octosalate, octocrylene, and insolazole. So you're getting essentially bumps in the entire part of the spectrum. Avobenzones, UVA1, UVA2, octocrylene, UVB, UVA2, and helping to really stabilize that avobenzone. Pretty much everything else is UVB. And aside from that, the formulation is pretty basic. Glycerin's another standout. It's just a nice humectant, obviously. And I think that kind of gives a little bit more of the texture of it being really nice lightweight, elegant gel. And then you do have the licorice extracts that give the antioxidant and DNA repair benefits from the formulation. Worth noting, I get a lot of people on all my different social media channels talking about, I don't know how you like the Eucerin so much. It does pale. I don't know why that happens to individuals. I have never had that happen to me. Even with substantially varying skincare underneath it, I've never had it pale or do anything weird texture wise. It always comes down to an incompatibility between the skincare ingredients underneath it. And obviously the ones that are in it, switch up your moisturizer, switch up your serums. Generally, sometimes it's usually going to be a serum situation. Again, this is adequately moisturizing to me as an oily skin individual. So maybe play around with not putting moisturizer underneath. But now let's get on to this one. This is again, the Eucerin Sensitive Protect, worth noting, Dry Touch Sun Gel Cream Ultra Light. This is 200 mil for anywhere between 15 to 20 pound, depending on where you get it. For the marketing on this one, an ultra light, non-greasy sunscreen for the body. This is technically a body sunscreen. That's why it's so much. It's clinically and dermatologically proven to be suitable for all skin types, including sensitive oily and acne prone skin, very similar to the other Eucerin one. This does also offer high UV protection, SPF 50 plus. It does have the UVA star circled on it. There's no Boots star rating on this for UVA protection though, so I can't tell you how many stars that is. If you can find something, comment that down below and I will try to pin it. Without it having that Boots star system, I can't exactly tell you based on how many stars it has, realistically where this 
SPF lies. It is 50 plus. Is it close to SPF 100 like the Ryman P20 is? I don't know, but it definitely hits that 50. It exceeds that 50. And it does have adequate UVA protection and that fundamentally for me is enough. I have realistic expectations with my sunscreen. I also take my other sun protection measures when needed. This one does also mirror some of the other claims that the other Eustrin one does make as well, such as the DNA repair mechanisms without licorice extract. This does also claim oil control technology, but this doesn't have the L-carnitine ingredient in there. It just solely relies on the mattifying pigments, tapioca starch. And then it does also say that it leaves an immediate dry touch finish. I can vouch for that. Quickly absorbs, doesn't leave any residue on the skin. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's water resistant, extra water resistant actually, which this face one does not make any claims for. It's not water resistant, but the body one is water, sweat, and sand resistant, which they actually specify, because I've talked about this with La Roche-Posay one. They say that that basically means that the sand is less likely to stick to you. Not so much that this can weather through sand and whatnot, ribbing on you and rubbing away. No, this just kind of prevents the sand from sticking onto you so much. Ingredient callouts for this. This one does have a carrageenan or seaweed extract, which can do some things primarily around some film forming abilities, as well as some moisturization. This one also has specific polymers that do also aid in being a little bit more water resistant and having a little bit more of a stronger film forming ability. It is water and sweat resistant. And then glycerin. And then also the specific licorice extracts again. And then filters for this, you have homosalate, avobenzone, tinosorb S, octosalate, uvenol T150, and uvenol A+, and insolazole. So you're adding on a few more filters on this to really amp up and build up the coverage. So you're getting a lot of reinforcement all throughout the UV spectrum. And they do make claims that this is octanoxate and oxybenzone free due to the Hawaii Reef Bill, which we all know doesn't mean anything on this channel. So how do they compare? What is the main difference between them? First main point I want to point out is these are different lines entirely. This one is Eucerin Oil Control. This one is Eucerin Sensitive Protect. There's a few other sunscreen in the Eucerin line that does fall under the Sensitive Protect product line, but that's the first thing to note. Also the fact that these are technically different products altogether. This is marketed as a body sunscreen. This is specifically intended for face. Can you use this one on your face? 100% yes. But basically what that comes down to is the overall elegance of the formulation. This one, very lightweight ultra gel texture. This one isn't so gel-like. Is it lightweight? Yes. Does it sink into the skin very quickly? Yes. But even looking at the formulation, there's a lot of things that just aren't the same and aren't very parallel. This one features primarily just more rich lipids and more emollients, some waxes and whatnot that make this have a little bit of a more rich moisturizing texture, but it's not by any means like really greasy. So the claims that they make that it's not greasy is very accurate and I can attest to that. Also worth noting, Fragrance Free does have fragrance. This one also has alcohol in it as well, but this one does have fragrance. What but I will note, this one doesn't have much of a smell to it in general. You can't really even tell there's alcohol in it. There's no alcohol smell. It just has that elegance that comes along with having that, which we all know here on this channel that alcohol is primarily a solvent just because those UV filters are all oil soluble ingredients. This one has the alcohol, also has the fragrance in it. I wouldn't be concerned about that for either one, honestly, but especially for this one, just because this one also compensates for that with the added humectant, but mainly all those moisturizing ingredients. You really feel this is a nicely moisturizing, skin nourishing, formulation. You really could not tell this has alcohol in it aside from the fact that it is just overall for body sunscreen a very elegant texture and formulation. I would rather have that kind of light perfume as opposed to a very pronounced sunscreen smell. As a body sunscreen, especially one that offers such high protection, is water resistant, you are most likely going to have that very stereotypical sunscreen smell. They try to mask that. So I would rather have this light, fresh fragrance than sunscreen smell. Overall, do I prefer it one over the other? This is not going anywhere. This is still a holy grail, hands down. I will use this pretty much all the time if I can on a day-to-day -day basis because I'm just going from my house to school, maybe to the store. I don't need heavy duty, water resistant, sweat resistant, anti-sand all day, every day, but there's a time and a place for this for sure. And honestly, the main incentive for this is the fact that it is a great deal. But worth noting is that it is a more moisturizing formulation. Some people might not want that. I actually have each one on each side of my face right now. I have the oil control dry touch on my right side. I have the sensitive protect body one on my left side. Do they look the same on the skin? Yes. Do they feel the same on the skin? For the most part, yes. This one kind of does feel a little bit more emollient, like there's a little bit more something to it, but the finish is what most people I think are more interested in. And as you can tell, they look very similar. So realistically, as I'm going through the winter and I don't need a lot of heavy duty, and for me, it's just like a daily wear sunscreen, I'm still gonna use this. I have backups of this. The texture for me is a lot more elegant because it is more of that Korean-esque gel texture. But during the summer when it's hot and I'm sweating, or I, I obviously I'm at the beach and I require that water and sweat resistance, definitely I'll use this. And 
and it definitely can hold its own up to this one. It's just a little bit more moisturizing because it just has more emollients and some waxes in there. Overall, are they very similar formulations? No, but do they look the same on the skin? Yes, and is this one a much better deal? 100%. So if you have oily skin and you want that higher protection, but you don't want that discomfort of a really greasy emollient sunscreen, definitely check this one out. This was a really beautiful, elegant formulation, very comfortable to wear. And again, I have each one on each side of my face. You couldn't clock the difference, could you? That's my comparison of my holy grail and its big sister. Let me know down below in the comments section. Do you find that you think there's a substantial difference between the two? Sound off in the comments. Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.